started. The, the screen is representing as how much we are into the cloud and right now how much we are using the cloud. But number of persons or uh, thousands of persons, we all are using clouds right now also. And, uh, but we are not aware, okay, on daily, daily uses, just we are going in the clouds, but we are not knowing anything. So here, I just want to show with this slide, okay, right now we are using Twitter, Dropbox, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, SkyDrive, Gmail, a number of things in front of you. So right now, we all are using these facilities, but we are not aware these all things are basically in the cloud right now. These all things are basically in cloud computing. Right? Cloud services yet also and from last many years, but I think that's we are using this cloud services in our daily users. So just I want to tell these services, this Twitter, Dropbox, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Gmail, SkyDrive, all these services are in the cloud right now. So let's we'll study in detail what is the cloud right now. So here in this slide, I want to tell you how much cloud is into our life and how much like cloud is utilizing the given resources in a virtual model. We can look at these lines. Cloud computing is internet-based computing whereby shared resources, softwares, and information are provided to computers and other devices on demand. So what is this basically? Just we here we want to tell you that cloud computing, want to do, cloud computing is basically internet-based computing services where just we are having resource sharing. Means I can facilitate if infrastructure, I can facilitate platform, I can facilitate the software services with the help of cloud, only with the internet-based. The thing is, in cloud computing, there is no need to install anything on our particular PC. Here, simply any of the services, either platform or infrastructure, just we can leave it to the cloud provider company. It means simply we can have all these facilities with internet only at our end, a high speed internet. So it means our resources are kept at other end with the cloud provider company and just we are accessing those resources with internet only. That's why uh, this is an internet-based computing or I can say it is a utility-based computing. The reason being, suppose we are, just, uh, we are just utilizing our electricity and water at our home, but we are not aware where this electricity is coming from or I can say from where this water is coming from, from which river or from which electricity grid it is coming from. Just we are utilizing their services through a pipeline and we are just paying the bill accordingly, the units we are consuming. So in the similar way, cloud computing is coming as a utility computing because we are not aware where these resources are coming from. Simply, we are just taking facilities of these resources with an internet-based pipeline, I can see. So here, simply, we are being charged for the units we are consuming of clouds, basically. So simply here, resources are not our own. Simply those resources are in a rental mode. Just we are paying the rent of using those resources. So here, the cloud computing is a culmination of numerous attempts at large scale computing with seamless access to virtually limitless resources. Here, as soon as the requirement extends, our personal requirement extend or our company's requirements are extending at the same time just we can send the request for higher configurations of in infrastructure or uh, higher configurations of any type of uh, uh, basics basic requirement of the computers or compute services i can say they can be accessed they can be extended to our requirement and we can access it through internet based so here it is a it is also mentioned with seamless with seamless to 
virtually limitless resources it means we are not limited to a particular resource because what happens on i want to make a project on uh, .net or java j2ee or java or anything so in that case what happens i have to be dependent on particular platform or integrated development environment and particularly hardware configuration also in, in that case i have to move to particular shops there i have to purchase the stuff for software as well as hardware and then i have to install that and then we will start our working now in case of cloud computing as soon as my requirement is i i must have a ide for developing application as a dot, a dot net or a java there's no need to wait for a single second simply go to cloud computing provider just simply connect to the cloud computing provider and just access those resources within a second and you can start now start working at your end so you are having every type of resource at cloud computing provider and just access with the internet only so that's why it is basically on demand computing utility computing and elastic computing so whenever you are having a demand of any kind of infrastructure or platform or any kind of services just you can access all those services with cloud computing and simply you must have an internet connection you are utilizing those computing that's why those services are on a rental basis you are not owning you are not own any any infrastructure or platform simply you are dependent on cloud computing provider here elastic elastic computing means as soon as your requirements are just expanding so your resources will be expanded automatically according to your requirement and as soon as your demands are shrinking so your resources are also shrinking at the moment so you are simply going to pay the billings of the resources you are using whether that is an extended mod or shrink mod so that is a kind of facilities they are providing by clouds that is on demand utility computing and elastic computing so these are the facilities coming with the clouds or benefits you can see now we can go to the definitions of cloud computing here the cloud computing is the means of delivering computing capabilities here we are getting all processing storage by using these resources using shared or dedicated resources that depends on the cloud resources in a shared mode or the resources can be dedicated also according to the requirement of the clients so that are housed in a secure centralized platform so all clouds are basically highly secured rather than using our customer own servers cloud capacity is inherently burst stable can be expanded or contracted as required to meet fluctuations in demand this lines itself are saying whatever is the requirement of the clients that will be proven with clouds the services will be expanded or contracted accordingly to the requirements of the that client basically so these are the plus points or i can say these are the features of cloud basically so expansions and contractions rapid i can say rapidly available these all are basically i can say uh, features of clouds we can see uh we are just having a cloud computing overview in this slide so there are certain kinds of services provided by this cloud computing model so these are three services model basically so the, there is a saas model if there are end users simply wants to use a software as a services simply they can use a saas model for an example suppose there are google apps facebook Twitter, LinkedIn, all they are the example of software as a services right now. Simply, we are utilizing their services. Secondly, if we want to develop any applications, so that that is, we need a platform. In that case, for needing a platform, we need a pass environment for the application developer. And here, this is the ER structure. This is the infrastructure as a services. These are utilized for the network architectures. Architects here. if you need to configure the hardware structure according to your own requirements in that case we need a er structure that is an infrastructure as a services 
So I can conclude it as a software as a services is utilized by the end users directly. Fast services, platform as a services will be helpful for services, will be highly, highly beneficial for the network architects who are going to configure all hardware structures and the building structures. So these are the three service models basically in cloud computing. Now here again, just we can have the similar things like application. In applications, we can just monitor, we can read the content, we can have a collaboration to this application. So this application structure comes in SaaS model, that is the software as a services. Now, if we need a particular platform, so in that case, we need a runtime environment, we need a databases, we need identity management, we need object storage also and certain queues for fulfilling our demands. So in that case, we need platform as a services. So this point is concluding as a platform as a services. Here again, if we need an infrastructure, as in infrastructure, you can see we need a particular storage area, particular types of networks and all compute services. Here we can see in compute services, a particular ROM, RAM and frequency related issues, all we can get through infrastructure as a services. So this is being categorized in this form. Now from there, here we can see these clouds can be accessed by any kind of devices, either desktop, tablets, phones, or any kinds of devices. So that is the beneficial feature of cloud computing because cloud computing supports APIs that is being integrated with all these other smart devices. From the slide, we can see very easily there are certain there are certain terms associated with clouds. There's a cloud marketplace, there's a cloud broker platform which are working as a brokers, which are making people understand what is cloud and what type of cloud services can be uh, highly benefited to the particular companies accordingly to their particular platform they're working with. Here we can see the SaaS model. Which companies are working in SaaS model of cloud? That is Google Apps. You can see in its huge Salesforce itself is a SaaS business, which is a SaaS model, and the company is providing a software as a services platform. Suppose we want to work with a PaaS platform. In that case, Microsoft Azure, Post.com, Google, and nowadays AWS, Amazon Web Services, is also started. There is an ER structure, infrastructure as a services. In this structure, Amazon Web Services, Rackspace, Google Joyent, and other companies are having their giant spaces in infrastructure as a services. They are providing company infrastructure. And other terms are also there. There are cloud platforms and virtualization and hardware, other things that we can understand later on parts. Now, what is the need? Why we are moving towards cloud? Let's we understand what is the beneficial points with the cloud here. So just we are reading here benefits of using clouds here. You can see there's a flexibility. Why this flexibility is coming? Because, because we are expanding and contracting the cloud services, the cloud infrastructure, the cloud platforms as according to our business demands basically. So this flexibility structure just helps to meet our business demands on the spot I can see. Now come to the disaster recovery because what happens in these clouds, these clouds keeps their data across the world at their data centers, different data centers. They are taking care of those data centers and this disaster recovery will be beneficial at the time if our data is lost in any catastrophic events or any calamitic events in that case we will be finding our data because already our data is saved in five to seven places across the world. So our data will never be waived off. There are automatic software updates. In that case, uh, automatic software updates, the cloud client or the person who is utilizing cloud needs not to worry about the renewal of licensing or other software updates because cloud company or cloud provider company, they are automatically providing all software updates side by side. That is totally seamless. 
just we are using our services without any kind of interruption here capex free environment means capital expenditure free environment suppose i want to have a startup with a company and i am not having so much good capital in that case we need any kind of services those can provide it me facilities as on a rental basis so cloud will provide me the things on rental basis without purchasing them and without putting any capital expenditure so just that is a hybrid capex free environment you can have your own company and have start up your own company without putting extra capital on it simply start taking the services of cloud computing provider and start your work simply that everything will be on the rental basis everything will be on the billing the units you are consuming here work from anywhere so it means because your clouds are available at any place at any time so that's why you can just switch into your smart devices any laptop pcs any of the tablets and just you can access the cloud because cloud apis are compatible with these devices there is a highly secure environment and that is environment friendly also now there are much more cloud benefits we can see here there is a secure and storage to storage management that is totally location independent because you can access the cloud from anywhere they are they are having a highly scalable and sustainable environment every time support is there virtualized environment is there paper use model is there because you are just paying whatever you are your your expense there is a high level computing and there is a low total cost ownership because you are not on the, you are not having an ownership on those infrastructure or platform on the components of the cloud it's a utility based time sharing model also other benefits are also displayed here again just i want to show you how much that has been beneficial to the industry in 2014 and in respect of 2013 also there is a greater scalability faster access to infrastructure that is accordingly that i had uh, told you in the earlier slide also whenever you are requiring a particular infrastructure you just send the request to the cloud they will, that will be at the moment that will be available at your place the infrastructure requirement higher availability every time and that is rapid application you can make because you are not going to wait for installations or purchasing anything from the market simply you can have the services from the cloud and start developing your models or application and put your uh, projects into the market as soon as possible so that is a fast and tight and time to market your graphics reach from any place you can just access the clouds you are saving your cost also business continuity plans are also there in the clouds and high performance and high it staff efficiency will be improved there now here what is basically just a we all now we came to know what the clouds now what is the saas what is the pass and what is the pass environment now we will be coming to the strategy of sales for what is basically the sales for is first of all i see clearly it is a saas model software as a service so now what is that that is basically a crm platform that is salesforce is an industry leading crm platform that is customer relationship management platform here that is also world leading enterprise cloud ecosystem so whole crm environment is being set up in the cloud ecosystem you can see here industries and companies of every size they can connect with their customers in a different way by using mobiles being social and using the latest innovative technology that will be in the cloud so now they can handle very easily the selling services the marketing services and they can succeed into their businesses with the help of the salesforce platform here again a slide and just giving an overview of crm what is the crm environment what is this client relationship model environment this is basically related with the sales automation with the help of crm we can do the sales automation marketing automation employee support in a singular environment 
there is a knowledge management base in CRM. There are different API and web services, portals, different types of portals in CRM. Here we can see return material authorization, order processing, all these types of automation which is required in sales and selling services of the products in that way for handling a complete CRM environment of a company. So this tool, Salesforce tools, is highly beneficial. Here we can again see this cloud CRM is basically, it will manage the customer information for the purposes of lead management, sales forecasting and conversion or total automation is there in this sales force. Right now, it is a leader in cloud computing system for customer relationship management. We can, we can have all sales or in social environment, we can handle the call center knowledge by Salesforce cloud computing services. Now, this is the person who has launched this innovative company. He is the Mark, Sir Mark Banhoff. The company is located in San Francisco, California, USA. And this company has been founded as a best, 100 best companies with a fortune right now. And this is a hash one innovative company with a Forbes report, I can say. So right now, just this company is leveraging and booming in the world because this is a totally new concept and this is a highly innovative company. You can see the Salesforce economy also, how much this is being impacted all over the world. You can see how this global Salesforce global footprints are impacting the whole world with the slides here. And from this, here we can see how this Salesforce has grown up and how much revenue it is collecting from the market. We can see 2015, you can see revenue in US dollar, 58 plus billion dollar. So this much revenue it has been just acquiring. These are the globally strategic partners of Salesforce like Capgemini, Deloitte, Accenture, Blue Wolf, Cloud Sherpa, Zapirio, all these are basically cloud partners and I feel numbers of companies are just Uh, hello, Deepika. What happens earlier in a traditional mode or in a legacy platform, we are just focusing on the infrastructure, whether that what is the infrastructure, what is the platform there. But in case of Salesforce platform, we just focus on innovation, on innovative techniques, because our uh, everything infrastructure, governance on of those infrastructure is being held by the cloud provider company to provide you infrastructure and all platform on which you are pro going to provide your innovations. So no need to worry about the infrastructure, no need to worry about the platform because we all we are getting all these basic online things from Salesforce and just we can focus on our new innovative techniques to where we can make our new applications and we can focus on our clients basically can focus on our business requirements or enhancement of business so no need to worry about the infrastructure and governance in future now we everything on the salesforce platform now here these are the companies basically who are currently surviving as a client of salesforce right you know? Apart from it, there are a lot of companies nowadays in the market. Here, there's a one of, this is one of the Fortune's 100 best companies to work with the Salesforce environment. So here, we can see there's a cloud of Salesforce. You must have an internet connection and 
your any of the devices, your PC, laptop, smartphone, tablets, any of the thing, and you can just connect with the sales force with the help of internet. That's the only requirement. You can see with the, this point, but there are multi geographic data centers available in the sales force, and this is the point of disaster recovery because our data is being replicated to different points, different zones there. And uh, thus our data is safe, maybe if there's any kind of terrorist attack or catastrophic events, maybe. So in that case, our data is totally safe because one of the ways we can just get the data again. Here again, there are a few features of Salesforce. There's a reliability feature because how reliable? Because our data is highly secure and that is through this slide slide, we can see our data is highly secure as well as replicated also. Now we can find our data anywhere else in any kind of disaster. So that's why we are having the reliability features that is totally uptime at any time just you can access it. High performance is there, highly secured. This uh, cloud Salesforce has acquired ISO 27001 certificate. This certificate is relevant with this highly secure feature of the particular sites. Cloud computing, the Salesforce is basically a multi-tenant architecture because just we are using a shared platform and these persons are using the same infrastructure, the same architecture at their own and that is totally shared among different users or developers. Cloud, com this, uh, cloud computing company, the Salesforce releases four versions in a year because we, every time they are just reviving themselves, they are putting updates. Here we can see our data is highly safe in the cloud because our data is just tokenized and encrypted and put in the clouds, put in the cloud storage, their red disks and other modes of storage. So our data is highly secure and they are not encrypted in a single ones, they are encrypted twice or thrice times accordingly. Here, the Salesforce is stored, stores its data in servers with a strong architecture designed to withstand catastrophic events and earthquakes up to also. So now, that's why Salesforce is highly reliable because now the data can survive at 8.0 Richter scale also. Here again, you can access the cloud services, Salesforce with any kind of devices, any of the devices. Salesforce has closed 1 billion transactions per day nowadays. This is the latest information of cloud Salesforce. That's, that mean, this means how much Salesforce is being utilized. This is a person, Sir Mark Danioff, and receiving the congrats pass after having this data, this one billion transactions per day. Now, what is the cloud Salesforce market share? That is, you can see, that is more than 40%. That is 45.8% right now, as compared to other uh, CRM environments by other companies. We can see CRM that is acquiring 18.1%. And others, we can see SAP 8.4, 7.2 with logic and this 20.5 with Oracle. But right now, Salesforce is booming in the market and acquiring highest market share with it. You can see the job trends in the Salesforce 159% growth in demands for Salesforce. You can see there's a highly growth in the Salesforce job trends also. With this chart, we can see how much till now, from January 6 to January 14, we can see how much job growth trend has been increased. And this is the data from the sites, with the job job sites basically, how much how much jobs they are receiving from different companies. So from this, we can see if there's a huge demand of Salesforce jobs in the market in coming years, in coming decades also. These are the basic points which is beneficial for the Salesforce developers or I can say here what are the, the Salesforce which are benefiting the platform, that's why there are high rise in demands of developers. 
So we can see the developers are leveraging to rapidly deliver enterprise application. So rapid, uh, here, by using the Salesforce environment, the developers are convenient and in the easiest mode, they can rapidly deliver the application, they can rapidly deliver the project by using this multi-tenant architecture. And this architecture is highly uh, reliable and secure with a high performance. The platform involves rapidly in its capability and global scalability also. This is again the feature of Salesforce, which is being beneficial for the developers to leverage their applications and to be them to be their application in the scalable mode whenever it is required. It is a faster and easier deployment with the Salesforce environment. Here it is contributing to a great return on investment also, managed data integration of synchronous issues and it provides the upgrades at a moment to large number of users and those upgrades are easily deployed. So there are num the, the, the interface, the Salesforce interface is very easy and very convenient and very familiar interface. That's why this is the reason being the people are highly adopting it. That's why they need Salesforce developer or administrator in the market to make their applications. So these are the beneficial points which are in the favor of Salesforce environment. That's why companies are opting Salesforce environment at their end and they are requiring Salesforce developers and administrators to control their environment. This is the Salesforce learning part, which we are going to complete in our courses. That is basically we are going to learn the basically uh, basic objects that are standard and custom objects. Apex language we are going to learn, Visual Force, which are the learning part. There are certain controllers, securities, and we are going to learn about MVC architecture. How this MVC architecture is going to work in Salesforce? There are different business logics in the Salesforce and how to build the sites. We are going to learn in the Salesforce environment. Here we can see introduction to Salesforce. Here in this introductory part, we'll be covering all these parts. What is the CRM? What are Salesforce products? What is the basic administration of Salesforce? Then we'll be coming to the application design in second module. Here we'll be learning different components of applications, different MVC architecture, the MVC controller designings, what are the business requirements, what are the personal functional specification of applications. In the third module, we'll be covering force.com platform, its declarative framework, different building blocks of applications, the different types of objects, types of fields and custom application scenarios we are going to take in this. In this fourth module, we are going to cover the data models that will be correlating with master data relationships, lookup relationships, admin profiles, roles, users, OWD. So we'll be covering all these features and we'll be explaining and just experimenting and in a practical mode how this going how these stuffs are going to work. In the fifth module, we are going to cover all user interface, GUI interface with the help of applications, applications, sorry, detail pages, list view, search layouts, different actual course sites are there. So we are going to cover these user interfaces in fifth module. Then we'll be covering business logic, and that is validation rule, workflow rules, approvals, use cases with the help of different use cases, Apex and controllers we are going to cover in business logic module. And then, in the end, we are going to cover the data management with the help of import, export, and utilizing the Apex Data Loader tool. We'll be covering analytics, snapshots, upsearch statements, external IDs, what are record IDs. And in the end, in eight morning, we are going to cover reporting and analytics parts also in this uh, Salesforce learning part. So this is all the whole syllabus which we are going to cover. We are going to take a few scenarios where we can test the environment side by side and a lot of things. How the application is going to be leveraged with this Salesforce environment. Here we can see that you can find your dream job after 
covering the sales force, uh, sales force <coughs> learning. And you can see here with this picture that Forbes has evaluated it as the most innovative company. And with the report of Fortune, this is the seventh best company to work for. So now we can proceed to work with the sales force and we can start learning and we can have our dream job here. And ultimately, my last word will be, we can we ultimately we have to move to the clouds because that is the urge, that's the demand of the coming scenarios or coming era. I can see we finally we have to be in the cloud in any mode and finally this is the ultimate requirement and everything every environment will move in the cloud slowly slowly everything every company every data has to move in the cloud and this is being going yet also and uh, it will move ahead in future also finally we are going to survive in the cloud that is the last word. So that's why we must learn as soon as early. That's the thing.